reminder, this presentation will be recorded. <clears throat> I also want to, want to take the opportunity to thank Council Member Gray. I see that she has uh, joined us tonight, so I want to thank her for joining us for the meeting. So good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for the community meeting for Rising a Road at Interstate Highway 35W. The city is excited to be making some paving and traffic signal improvements at this intersection. I can tell you for sure, I'm, I'm JT Aldridge, by the way, <clears throat> uh, and I'm the city project manager for this project. I'm excited uh, because this is a major milestone for us as uh, moving into construction. These, these improvements we're going to talk about tonight are going to begin construction soon. And it's a it's a big milestone for us to to reach within the city. This project, we've been working on it uh, for about three years now, so it's very exciting to get it to this point. So tonight, the agenda will be pretty brief. I will go over the project location map just to make sure we all understand exactly what we're talking about. We'll discuss what the existing conditions are at this location, and I'll spend the bulk of the time talking about the description of the project, the proposed improvements that we will make. And I will give you an idea of the construction schedule, and then we will have time for questions there at the end. So this is a very zoomed out map, but I wanted to show you, and just in relation to downtown Fort Worth, I and mean, you see where I'm highlighting here, the project is south of downtown Fort Worth, uh, south of I-20, and so it's really, it's located between I-20 and FM 1187. So it is where Rising Road crosses I-35W. And this project location map is, is zoomed quite a bit in so that in this red circle over here, you can see the intersection itself of Risinger and I-35, and that's the project location that we'll be talking about tonight. And this gives you a little bit of perspective just down the road to the west, uh, just down Risinger Road to the west is uh, David L. Walker Elementary School. So uh, if this gives you, hopefully this gives you some perspective on the, the project location. So we'll be talking about the, the intersection here, Risinger and I-35. So I'm gonna go over just a few pictures of what the existing intersection looks like. And the existing condition, we have a, a two-lane asphalt roadway for Risinger Road at this intersection. And it is uh, controlled by stop signs. So it's, a, it's a, basically a four-way uh, stop sign controlled intersection and the the existing intersection and when I when I say that both intersections at both frontage roads um, the, the existing intersections experience significant delay right vehicular delay um, in fact we we categorize it as a, a level of service e so when we talk about level of service, that's just, uh, we give it a grade, just like you would in school, like an A, B, C, D, E, and an F. And so you can see these, these intersections operate currently at a level of service E, so they're just above the worst grade um, that they could be. And this photo here is looking at, uh, it's looking westbound, from the east side of I-35. So it's looking back underneath the bridge there, uh, where you can see there are also two existing lanes underneath the bridge of underneath I-35. So <clears throat> this slide is where I likely spend the bulk of the time. This is the proposed improvements that the city's going to make. And the biggest thing is we're gonna add traffic signal at each intersection with, with the frontage road. So Risinger and the southbound frontage road, and then over at the northbound frontage road, we are going to uh, construct traffic signals at those two intersections. And along with that, underneath the bridge, we're going to widen Risinger Road a bit in order to get a third lane 
that will be a dedicated left turn lane. So if you're headed eastbound on Risinger and you want to go northbound on I-35, uh, particularly the probably the morning commuter traffic headed toward Fort Worth, will be making this dedicated left. So we're going to add a dedicated left turn there. In addition, the the lane right next to it, the eastbound lane, will be what we call a shared use lane. So it, from that lane, you'll be able to make a left turn as well or go straight through uh, to go eastbound east of I-35. So that allows essentially two lanes of traffic to turn left and really helps out the operation uh, of, this, of this entire, uh, these two intersections together. You know, they're so close, they work together. So going east of I-35 of the, of the frontage road, you'll see essentially we just have what we call a transition through here. So we're just, we're just narrowing the pavement back down to connect to the existing two-lane uh, pavement further to the east. And uh, another thing is underneath I-35 that we'll be in constructing is a sidewalk that will cross underneath I-35 under the bridge and go from... Uh, intersection to uh, both from from the northbound frontage road to the southbound frontage road and it'll be on the north side of Risinger Road there'll be a uh, sidewalk there and so that will include some pedestrian ramps at the corners of Risinger and the frontage roads with uh, pedestrian crossing markings installed as well and the one thing that I want to point out is that on this west side of I-35, the city has been uh, working with a developer, um, a developer that is planning to uh, develop the southwest corner of Risinger and I-35. And the developer has plans to construct Risinger Road from Technology Boulevard all the way to the frontage road of I-35, the southbound frontage road, and their plan is to construct that rising road as a four lane divided concrete section with a raised median between, um, you know, down the middle. So um, that is something the city has been working with the developer on. What I want, the reason I mention it is because obviously that project would, would connect to the project that, that we're talking about tonight but it is a separate project and it is led by a, a, a developer through the city. So, uh, so I don't have a lot of information on that project, but I do believe that the timing of it should be similar to the work that we're proposing uh, here at these intersections. And I'll talk about the, the schedule when we get to that slide. But the, the important thing is uh, the the traffic signals going in and the widening underneath the bridge with the with an additional left turn and so that um, by making these improvements you, know, you remember the level of service that i talked about earlier that that will improve the level of service at these intersections to a level of service b so it gets us almost to the best level of service which would be a that you can get to and that's really that's really excellent to get to a level of service B, and that uh, that is for projected traffic volumes in 2027. So uh, that is uh, we we take the existing traffic volumes that uh, that are out there today, and we we grow them or we increase them at four percent annual growth, knowing that traffic increases, and then we we come up with this. Um, the signal operation, and, and we, we studied it for the year 2027. So uh, we got excellent uh, operation with these traffic signals. So in this slide, I'm just showing simply a, a recap of what I just discussed. The, the description of the project is, and just is a widening of Risinger Road pavement underneath the I-35 bridge. We are constructing a concrete sidewalk on the north side of Risinger Road underneath the I-35 bridge. We're going to, of course, install the traffic signal at the northbound and the southbound frontage road at I-35. And, of course, this will include pavement markings and uh, new signage, of course, as needed. 
and then it includes a couple of city utility adjustments, and those are just necessary uh, adjustments that are that are needed to be made with the um, with the paving improvements. And so this slide, again, a brief overview of our construction schedule. So the city has selected a contractor, select maintenance, and the city has entered into an, uh, an agreement, a contract with this contractor, and the construction duration is anticipated to be about four months with construction starting in September. And so you should see construction starting in this location right after or shortly after Labor Day. And then that will put us ending construction um, just after the first of the year, January of 2021. So about a four month time frame. And with that, we are going to be wrapped up to questions. So as I mentioned, if you have a question, please type it into the chat function and we'll make sure we answer those and then again if you're on the phone only we will uh, we'll give you an opportunity to ask a question if you if you want to do that on the on the phone line there are no questions yet JT but we'll give them a couple of minutes sure Jeff, I guess we can unmute the callers while we wait for any other questions. All right, I will. Uh, I'll start unmuting. We have one, two. We have five call-in users, so I'm just going to go ahead and unmute them all. Um, if you're on the phone only and you would like to ask a question, just uh, let us know your name so we know who we're talking to. Um, and then uh, kind of go one at a time so we don't we try not to talk over each other. Okay, if you're on the phone, you're now unmuted. Hey, I'm not uh, not hearing any questions um, coming in from the call-in users. Uh, if there's anybody else at, at this time that's muted, that's on for, uh, another way, feel free to unmute yourself uh, if you have a question for JT. <laughs> Chat questions are coming in. Uh, JT, will the intersection be closed completely during construction, or will there be will there be a partial usage of the intersection? So, <clears throat> the I believe the intersection should be open all the time. There should always be partial usage of the intersection. Traffic should be able to get through there. Now, uh, I will say that particularly. West of I-35, west along Rising Road, it's very narrow right there. And there is a, we, we did include a detour plan in case the contractor needs to close down for, a, it would be a very brief, a very short duration. But if the contractor um, needs to be able to close down, the, particularly the west side of I-35, west, you know, Rising Road west of 35, there is a detour plan. So it is possible that that could be closed for a brief time. I say brief, I mean, it could be several several days and there would be a detour plan put in place if that happens. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll let you ask the question. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Philip. And um, I was just wondering, I use Rising Road uh, very, very frequently. And one thing I've noticed is that there seems to be water. I, I came on the meeting late. You may have answered the question before. But I don't know if the spring beneath the, the roads or what, but it seems to me that each time they repair the surface before, the road would then um, sink. So I don't know, um, you know if there's a water spring there or they are addressing those when they are doing the construction of the road or not. So what I'd like to know is, is there a spring there? And is the contractor focused on making sure that once the road um, is completed, that it does not sink like has been done previously? Um, you know, each, I mean, it takes maybe less than a year before it um, starts the road start going down. So we don't want a situation whereby, you know, the road start deteriorating in a few years. Is that happening right at the intersection or is it further west? Um, it's closer to the railroad track in the middle where they have repaired it. So, you know, I am assuming that the project is widening the entire rising road. Is that correct? No, you you did. You missed the beginning of the presentation. Um, right, I certainly did. I mean, I, I missed a lot of it. So that's that's why I'm asking this question. So if you have addressed it again already, then I apologize. No, not at all. That's okay. It's that this project is located right at the intersection with I-35. So it's really it's rising or right at I-35. We're installing some traffic signals at the frontage roads. And we're widening, uh, rising or underneath the bridge at 35. But this uh, is this will this project will not address rising or back to the west. It will not address that area that you're talking about. Okay. So there's another chat question. Will the two lanes leading to I-35 be widened as well? And the answer is <laughs> one more. Right? Let me I'm, let me make sure. I'm not sure I understand the question exactly. So, um, if uh, the two lanes leading to I-35, um, this is Nedra Robinson. Can I ask a question now? Sure. Uh, okay. So um, between. You know, Crowley Road till you get to I-35, will that whole section be expanded or just the section um, that you pointed to like past David L. Walker Elementary? Okay, so the the segment of rising or from Crowley Road or FM 731. JT, can you bring that slide back? Oh, uh, sure. For both improvements. Thanks. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the segment of rising are from Crowley Road, which is you know you know to the to the west, all the way, uh, really all the way over to the frontage road. Um, that segment of rising are is it is included in the city's master thoroughfare plan, so it it's included to be widened to a I believe it's a four lane um, arterial thoroughfare street. Uh, so it's in the city's master plan. It's in it's in the plan for the future, but that segment from Crowley all the way to the frontage road here at I-35 is is not does not have funding authorized for it currently. Okay, thank you. So the improvements of this project are limited to basically the intersection and the approaches of the intersection. So just a few hundred feet. East and west of the intersection. Hey, JT, um, would you let everyone know um, when the, the the other section that we're working on from Hewland to Crowley on Risinger would be 
kind of a quick update on that and when we expect that to open. Okay, so Jeff, yeah, you're referring to the, we have under construction currently, we have a, just a section of Risinger from, uh, from McCart Avenue over to Crowley Road. And that's under construction and we're anticipating that to be open, well, I'll say hopefully by the end of this year, but we'll also say January um, early next year. So in the next four, four to five months, you should see a lot of concrete pavement being installed in that section. Thank you. So we have another question, JT. Um, someone lives on West Rysinger Road and is wondering whether they'll still be able to get to I-35 in the mornings. They're just, they just live west of Camp Hill. Yes, so, and, and yes, you should still be able to get to I-35 in the mornings, again, unless the contractor um, needs to close rising a road for some reason, and, and if so, they will they will uh, set up a detour, and um, you know you would you, you probably know the area, you're probably familiar with it. You would you would need a detour up to Sycamore School Road. Um, so it is possible that there could be a closure, but it it would again it would be brief, maybe for just um, a minimal number of days. But it definitely will not be closed down for. Um, for months. That's the last question we have on the chat. We'll just give people a few minutes. And if there are no more questions, we will adjourn. We appreciate your patience, folks. I know this is a little awkward having everybody silence and just being able to type your questions and not having you know real time feedback from 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 all, all of you. So we, we really appreciate your your patience in this uh, very unusual times. Hopefully, we've been able to convey the basic information that you guys need. And we've been able to answer your questions tonight. Well, if there are no more questions, I think we will adjourn. JT, will you flash your contact information? Do you have your contact information there? I don't recall. I do. Let me get to that last slide there. there. Yes, that's my email address and my phone number. If you have any questions uh, in the future, please feel free to contact JT. And we again, we appreciate your attendance tonight, and we want to thank uh, Council Member Gray, who attended, joined us tonight as well. And uh, that's all for tonight. Thank you very much.